Hey, welcome back to Light Metaphors, friends. Uh, just want to share tonight a little bit about the subject of uh, the seer and what uh, the seer is and the function of the seer. Uh, you know, um, the scriptures talk about the seer in the in the ancient uh, 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 Hebraic uh, um, uh, recordings and in in the days of uh, Elijah and and the days of uh, uh, Jeremiah and and the prophets. And the seers, they were, in those days, they were called seers and they were prophets as well. But there is a difference between um, the two. And, and the primary difference between the seer and the, and the prophet is, is their mode of revelation, the way they receive revelation. And so like the seer, the, the Hebrew word for seer is uh, ra'ah, but it's also the word hosa in, in uh, the ancient Hebrew language. And Hosea uh, is, is uh, the, defined as a, as a beholder of visions or a stargazer. A beholder of visions or a stargazer. You know, they were known as those that gazed at the heavenly bodies. Uh, they, they were known as those who saw visions, who had ecstatic experiences. Wherever you see the word uh, uh, Haza in the Hebrew language, it's always related or t linked to an ecstatic experience. That word Haza is the word that I use often under, that it's uh, used under my logo with the blue orb and underneath it's the three Hebrew letters Ket, Ket Zayin and He. That's uh, the word for Haza. Haza and it, it's, it's the word uh, meaning envisioning something in a vision. It's in, envisioned in visions. So I envisioned something in a vision. I saw something in a vision. I was taken up and, and I experienced something. I, was, I went into an ecstatic, uh, ex visionary experience, a trance, and I saw something. It's also the word meaning to, to provide for, or to select for oneself. It's, it's, it's a, a word that incorporates like the receiving of light, the receiving of nourishment. And, and um, it, it speaks of the sword uh, of light and piercing coming into you, uh, light that's descending light into your heart. It's the it's the word for uh, for uh, uh, to to focus. That's a strong Hebrew word meaning to focus. I, I was shared that. Uh, Bobby Connor shared that with me once uh, um, years ago. He, he he told me that word is the strongest word for, for focus in, in in a Hebrew in in the language. It's it's it speaks of a strong focus uh, where you're you're locked, uh, concentrated, and focused on something. And that's a very important principle too. It's the the law of focus. And and so you know haza and. Uh, that word stems from um, also or is related to the word hosa, which is the seer. You know, the seer, haza, to focus, to envision something in a vision, and hosa, the seer. And so the seer enters into that place, that mode of revelation where he begins to see something, begins to dream something. And it comes through the eyes of his inner man, the eyes of the spirit, the eyes of the imagination. This is the mode of revelation that the seer has. He was also as known as, again, the, a stargazer. Just as my church uh, shows, it, it's, it's the eagle. And within the eagle, you see the, the galaxy or the stars, the heavenly bodies. And, and, and you see the lights, the stars in, in scripture represent oftentimes messengers or uh, angelic messengers and, and, and the prophetic realm and the, the seer realm is, is functions uh, as messengers, as those who receive light, they receive the, the light of the knowledge of the glory of God, which is revealed in the face of Christ. And we behold him, our focus is him, and so we receive the, from his face comes forth, the, uh, as the uh, Hebrew says, the sun is the radiance of God's glory, the exact representation of his, of his being. That word radiance speaks of beams and shafts of light. And those beams and shafts of light that enter into us, the entrance of your word gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. Understanding is that light of the knowledge and understanding of the glory of God. It sh comes up into us. We begin to see it. It enters into the lamp of our spirit. And, and it illumines us from the inside out. That enlightens us. And we begin to see light. And that light, it carries, it, it carries, 
It comes in the in in visions, in pictures, and in thoughts, and and primarily in the the seer realm, you begin to see the voice of God. You begin to see the language of the of God. I call it the picture language of God, or the metaphoric language of God. That when you're asleep in a place of deep sleep, uh, the voice of God comes in a parable. In metaphors and dreams and in visions you know that realm can be so complex as I learned years ago from one of my mentors that it's so complex that there could be a vision in a dream or a dream in a you can have a dream and all of a sudden you enter into a vision and um, like Daniel said in, in the scriptures he says as I lay my head down and sleep as as he laid down and slept visions ran through his mind so you can be in a place of a vision, uh, coming into a vision uh, as you're in a dream. And the thing, the difference is between visions and dreams is dreams are more metaphoric and symbolic, while the language of a vision or the a vision is more literal. So you can have a, a complex mix of that and go into different uh, realms of revelation. As the seer go goes into these places, he begins to see these things. He begins to experience these things physically in his body. Ezekiel was, it says about Ezekiel that he was taken up by a lock in his head, that like God reached down and lifted him up between heaven and earth. In As he stood in the midst of the elders, surrounded by the elders, God lifted him up. He, he, he uh, lifted him up above the ground and, and brought him into visions. And, uh, and as he was uh, taken into visions, he ended up uh, talking about after the vision he 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 spoke about and described how he was exhausted his physical body was just impacted by that realm of vision and ezekiel was indeed a seer and um he as he described that it shows us that there's uh the seer realm of visions can uh leave an impact on our physical body that it plays that uh a, a real incredible it can leave an incredible impact on our physical body that's how real it is uh, and and so ezekiel talked about how he was exhausted in his body for days afterwards after that uh, uh that ecstatic visionary experience he had where he was taken up and he was shown things and he was be able, uh, being able to see uh, behind the veil of things, the hidden things of hearts of men. And, and so visions, uh, uh, hara, I believe that's the word, um, uh, uh, mara, it's the Hebrew word mara and it's, it's that word for vision. And, and it's a heavy word because it leaves, it can leave an experiential impact on your physical body. And it's something I've experienced in dreams that, uh, in the past too. I remember I was dreaming one time and um, there was this uh, uh, two prophets, known prophets, two seers in my dreams. Uh, one was a, a prophet and another was a seer and he came up uh, and spoke with me and in the dream as I left, uh, a young man with long hair came running uh, at me and he had a uh, he had like a torch in his hand and and in the dream he ran up to me and he swung the torch across my face and as he did sparks just went whoosh and it it sounded like the sound of a of a torch a acetylene torch if you've ever seen someone light in a acetylene torch they use a sparker and, and acetylene gas and they 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 light they spark the the torch they use the, the starter and it creates a spark and all of a sudden there, there comes a whoosh of a fl the flame just ignites. It's, it starts the torch flame. It sounded like that in my dream and it was so incredibly strong that it actually jerked me out of my unconscious state. It jerked me out of my dream, out of my dream and I just jumped up out of bed and, and it literally felt like I was singed and the fire of God came on me and that was a visionary experience. That was a realm of this. That was a, a seer realm experience where I saw an experience, a vision, uh, a, a dream. Where, it, but there was a visionary reality where there is a true impartation of fire, and it was incredibly intense. It, it was shaking on my physical body. I mean, I literally shook out of my bed, shaking. Uh, so that was a description of a, of the visionary uh, realm of the experience of a mara of God. 
nowhere near Ezekiel's experience, but it was an experience that left an, an impact on me. And it did, uh, it was a, uh, set off in motion uh, some incredible things in my life. It was actually an introductory to the prophet, prophetic realm in my life, the seer realm. I began to, during that season, it was when I began to start having an escalation of supernatural experiences in God uh, that uh, were, was introducing me to the gift that God placed within me. Uh, years later down the road, God uh, transitioned me and brought me to a school of seers where I began to gain understanding, experience uh, uh, um, in uh, regards to the gift as well as uh, the character in life uh, that God um, emphasized uh, um, upon, upon me and others who had that s uh, type of gift. And so the seer, the hoza, the ra'ah of God, he was a visionary. He was a, a, a one who envisioned things in visions. Um, he was a beholder of visions. He was a, a stargazer. Again, a stargazer. In Genesis, God said uh, when he was in, in the creation story, he was creating the heavens and the heavenly bodies. You know, he placed stars in the heavens, he says, uh, regarding the stars that they would be uh, there to provide light and knowledge to the earth to give forth knowledge of times and of seasons uh, to the earth. And there is a spiritual language, there is a language God uses, he speaks through a language of the heavens. Again, we go, we understand that wherever there is a uh, genuine, you're gonna, the enemy's gonna try and take it, and he's gonna try and pervert it and create uh, a counterfeit. And that's where we get astrology, it's a perversion. You know, the gospel is in the heavens. The gospel is in the heavens. It's the zodiac gospel. The, God placed those stars to tell a story of Jesus coming, crushing the head of the serpent, and uh, dying and overcoming for, uh, for all the uh, humanity. It's in the heavens. God set it in place. And those that have eyes to see and ears to hear can see and understand these things. And so the, earth, the heavens, the heavenly bodies, they speak, they have a speech. It says in Psalms that they, night by night they utter forth their speech. And stargazers had an, a dimension, uh, operated in a dimension where they could understand the utterance of the heavenly bodies, the speech of God in the heavens. And they could understand times and seasons. That's where we understand the sons of Isaac, uh, Isaac that they, they had, they were, uh, the sons of Isaac knew the times and seasons. So this is a realm and a dimension of the seer gift where uh, you, one is enabled to know the times and seasons by even uh, uh, the heavenly bodies. And so the seer, again, he operated in a realm of dreams and visions. It was primarily dreams and visions, a visual realm. The eyes of his understanding were enlightened. Now, we understand that we all, whether you are a seer or not, are you, we can always, all of us can operate in some dimension of revelation that's uh, the seer realm, revel, uh, revelation. Uh, and because God has given us all spiritual senses. And there's, we all have eyes, eyes that can see. God can open up our eyes, open up his eyes that he may see. That's what the prophets say to, to, the, to the Lord uh, regarding his servant when they were surrounded by uh, the, the enemy and they were about ready. There was way more, uh, the enemy was just en encompassed about them and it was, they were just alone. And, and so, uh, you know, the prophet the seer who saw in the invisible realm the reality, the realm of true reality, the realm that uh, was the realm of real reality, true reality, he saw in that realm and the other man saw, the servant saw in the natural with his natural eyes and he saw that they were encompassed about by an army and he was frightened and terrorized but the the seer he saw the invisible realm and he prayed that god would open the eyes of the servant so that he would see in the same dimension and realm of true reality that the seer saw and so he prayed that god would open up the the servant's eyes and god opened up his eyes and as he opened up his eyes he began to see the reality that there was more heavenly hosts the armies of God were surrounding them and they were numerous and more than the armies that were encompassed about uh, them in the natural. And, and 
when you begin to have a revelation of the reality of heaven like that, there, it produces a courage in you, a boldness in you. It drives out the fear because you know that there are more for us than there are against us. And that's what it, it turned out to, to be, that the servant realized, hey, there's more for us than there are against us. And so he had a taste of the seer realm. He, he, his eyes were opened. Uh, I'm remind, reminded of a story of Jonathan where um, he, it, it describes that he took, Jonathan, Jonathan took his staff and he dipped it into the honeycomb. And then he tasted it. And it says that his eyes became brightened. In other words, his eyes became illuminated, enlightened. He began to see. And the honey represents revelation from God. And we begin to receive revelation in the seer realm and it begins to open up our eyes. We begin to see. Our eyes become brightened and we begin to see. And then uh, I, I just want to encourage you that although you may not op, uh, be flow, uh, functioning as a seer, but you can function in that same dimension in the seer realm because God speaks to you through your spiritual eyes as well. Um, and so like one of the prayers that that I would encourage everyone to pray is Paul's prayer because he prayed it for everyone. In the book of Ephesians, Ephesians 1.17, he just prayed that God the Father would enlighten, the, uh, would grant to us, the, them, uh, to us, the, a spirit of wisdom and revelation. Uh, that we, in the knowledge of Him, that we would know Him better because these things are, are meant to bring us into experiential knowledge of God, that we would know God by the Spirit, in the Spirit, Spirit to Spirit, because God is Spirit. And, and so this Spirit of wisdom and revelation enters in and begins to work in us and, and that it begins to enlighten the eyes of our imagination. That's where we begin to see in the seer realm, through the eyes of the imagination. And God begins to bring forth light. He floods our eyes with light. It's the flooding of the eyes, the enlightening of the eyes. That word enlightened is the Greek word photizo. And it's where we get our the English word photograph. That's where we get the uh, word photograph is photizo. And God begins to speak his word pictures, his, the, the picture language of God enters into us, comes in and begins to reveal itself in our imagination. We begin to see the picture language of God. The eyes of our understanding, of, of our imagination, we begin to see the imagination, the language of God in pictures comes to us. We begin to see that. And that's what God wants to do for all of us, not just the seer, but everyone because God has created everyone with uh, eyes, spiritual eyes, not just natural eyes, but spiritual eyes and spiritual ears and spiritual uh, uh, ability to spiritual smell, spiritual taste, spiritual touch and feel. And God wants to enlighten us and as it were, cause us to have golden senses and be able to sense things in that realm and that dimension as well as we can sense things in this realm and in this dimension. And so the seer realm is that which God wants to bless you with and cause you to walk in as well. And so the seer, again, it's, it's the, the, the described as the beholder of visions. It's, it's described, uh, he's described or she's described as, as a, a, a stargazer in the ancient Hebrew language. And may God bless you with greater understanding of his ability to communicate to you through the visual language, through that revelatory realm of, of visions and dreams. May God bless you and, and pour his spirit uh, upon you and or cause the spirit to stir up within you the spirit of wisdom and revelation that you begin to know him better and experience him. Thank you for checking out Light Metaphors. May God continue to pour his spirit on you this year and, and cause you to fulfill his purpose and destiny. Thank you again.